Hi there, I thought I'd do a video. I've not done one for a little while and I have all the kit, so why not? I used to blog um, or do videos post uh, running uh, to give people uh, an update on my progress. Unfortunately, rather sweaty and horrible and she captured on my phone, but there you go. So I thought I'd give it a try with the photography content. Um, I'm using my Olympus OMD M5 Mark II to see how this does. Uh, I have no kit, I literally have, you know, I have my Olympus and my cameras for stills. I have no mics or lighting or anything, so as you can see I'm using natural lighting for this video and my photography tripod and hopefully everything will stay in focus and you'll be able to hear me. So, here you go. I wanted to cover analog photography and if you've been reading my blog continuousfocus.co.uk you'll see that uh, I've been uploading a lot of 35mm photos and I've been using this little gem. It's um, an Olympus Trip 35. It's a point and shoot camera and I absolutely love it. It's absolutely tiny. Um, I got this one off eBay and I've got it for an absolute bargain because there's a slight dink in the corner of the lens but it works perfectly well and the last roll of well, the first roll of Ilford uh, I think it was FP4 plus 125 film I shot I shared on the blog and it's been really interesting to take this one camera for the best part of maybe a week if not two weeks and taking a reduced amount of photos really thinking about what I'm composing and what I'm shooting seeing how they come back and obviously not having the ability to check the back because there's no monitor um, and being excited by what I took um, trying to remember what I shot because I shot a lot of random things um, and in general I'm actually really impressed I wasn't sure the camera was going to work it's you know it's from 1969 I bought it on eBay the previous owner took it to Glastonbury so who knew if it was going to work properly or not um, but I was I was pleasantly surprised. I think I have a lot of learning to do with this. I, I had quite a few shots that were out of focus, or the lighting was a bit poor, or they were, they were a bit blurry. This probably is because I picked very high speed um, film. Um, some of the shooting was inside. Uh, some of it I, I didn't like the automatic controls of the camera do. I, I, I took some myself by changing the aperture to see if I could force the camera to take some shots. Um, you know, I, I, I think it's done a, a fairly good job and I'm quite proud of that first roll of film. It's now in my well, first photo, photo album I've bought in, I don't know, 20, 30 years. And I, should, I shall continue to use this camera and at the moment there is some, uh, let me just check, but at the moment there's some Fuji, there you go, some Fuji C200. I thought I bought 400 because I wanted a um, uh, higher ISO but I didn't um, but hey you know it happens so one of these is currently in here and I'm over halfway through now um, rather ironically I have a colour film in my camera around the point when the UK had the most amount of snow it's ever had so we were stuck at home um, not able to get into the office so we both worked from home for uh, almost a, a whole week but I was determined to make sure I got out and got some fresh air so I'd go out for like half an hour when I was supposed to take a break um, and took the trip with me and there's absolutely loads of pictures of snow on here and um, I'm going to what else I'm going to shoot um, I'm obviously going to be back in the office in central London at some point so I will take um, and we'll take the trip with me and take some more shots but it's great it is this tiny little camera it's probably it is smaller than my OMD my digital camera it's lighter there's no batteries or anything it uses the um, thrown on the bed it uses these uh, solar panels around the lens to power the light meter which I don't know how many cameras did this but for a camera that was built in the 60s I think it's very clever um, so yeah, really cool. I, I, can't, I really like it um, and I'm enjoying the analogue journey. It's obviously proving um, 
I find the, the developing a bit of a challenge. It's not something I think I'd ever do at home. So I'm having to find uh, places where I can send my films off to be developed. I've heard horror stories about people using chemists and things and big shops and the quality of the pictures not being great. I understand that, so I did find this processing company and they were really good actually. They, they returned the camera, that's the camera, they returned the film in three days with the negatives and I think they did a fantastic job. What I will do um, is I will change processing next time and I will add scanning into it. Now, when I had the first row um, developed, I said to myself, no, this is analog. It's, I only ever want to see them on paper. Um, that's the whole point. If I get them digitized, there's no point having an analog camera or going back to film. Um, but now I realize that I actually don't have the ability to scan the negatives or the pictures properly. We, we had a scanner years ago, got rid of it. Um, home scanners aren't great. So I've been using the Google photo scan app which comes with google photos and it does an okay job um, and you can import them into lightroom etc but i find that it adds more noise than necessary so um, i will end up paying a little bit more for this color road to be developed and have it scanned onto cd my next problem is i don't think we have a computer in the house with a cd player built in at all but it's that even a thing um, but I know downstairs in the study there is an old Mac um, super drive, so I can get the pictures off. I don't find the process cumbersome, but I find the lack of choice to be kind of annoying. Um, I don't live and work in the same place. I um, move around quite a bit with work. Um, you know, in the last month alone, I was in Liverpool and Surrey based in South London, I live in Essex, so I can't really, I could, but if I drop something off at a process is to be developed, I then have to wait until I'm in that area and for them to develop it, obviously, to pick up my photos. So I'm using this online company that I found and I'm quite happy with them. I don't know uh, how they compare with colour, but I should give them a go and um, see how we get on. But anyone who's thinking, about getting into analog photography, all I can say is go for it, give it a try. Um, my photography course and my, my diploma in photography got me an awful lot of information and insight into photography and I'm taking this and using it with, with this now and not okay this is automatic but I have the option to change, in, change some controls and it also means that I can use that knowledge to make the camera take pictures when it automatically doesn't want to. And I'm, I'm really enjoying that. I'm enjoying the, the freedom and the fact that I'm pausing and I'm thinking about what I'm shooting and I'm taking my time. And it is exciting to get the photos back. And yes, it's a little bit disappointing when they're a bit blurry, but there was a picture of Tilly. I think it was the first picture I took and I, I was too close and the camera focused on the background rather than her. I caught her unawares, she looks really grumpy because she's out of focus and it's a great shot and that's the, that's the beauty of analog photography. If I'd have taken that with my phone it wouldn't have happened, it, it would have auto focused. If I'd taken it with my camera probably the same thing and if I'd have got it wrong with my digital camera I would have deleted the picture. I don't have that option, I now have that printed out for forever. Um, and that's that's kind of cool, it's, it's, it's great to now go back to this actual physical medium of photography and I love learning more and more about my OMD, my EM5 Mark II and it's just had an upgrade. Um, it can do so much and you don't need the latest kit because every camera they can already do more than I think anyone can ever learn. Um, but I enjoy the technical sides and I enjoy pushing my digital camera but for me creatively as a person I, I think the mix of analog and digital is what will get me um, many, many more interesting shots. So I hope you've enjoyed the 35mm pictures I've already shared. Obviously, I don't have any more at the moment because I've got to get this camera finished, the throw finished and get it developed. But I really would be interested to understand what you think about uh, digital versus film and whether you've enjoyed looking at these uh, grainy old style photographs that I've been sharing. 
it certainly seems to have got my blog a little bit more attention so I know that there's a hunger for analog photography out there and I've been looking at lots of videos on YouTube. So there you go, so that's that's just my, my insights into why I started analog photography and, and blogging again. I don't know how often I'll do this, um, I rarely have the time to write a blog. Um, I only tend to do them when I'm on the train, thanks to the apps I have available for my, my blogging system. Um, but I will try and do maybe a couple of these at a time when I have some spare time, whenever that might be. Um, and store them up and shoot them and share them over, over time. But it'll be interesting to know what you think. And what do you think um, you'd like to see or hear more of me rambling on about uh, my photography? So there you go. But thanks for following the blog, thanks for all the comments and the likes. I hope you like the transition to uh, continuous focus from where I was. Um, I'm not going to give up the running or anything else that I talk about, but I, photography really is the thing that really got me critically um, interested. <clears throat> so that's where I, I, I want to kind of drive people to the blog and then share everything else that I have an interest in. But I hope you enjoy it and um, thanks for following and as everyone else says online, hit the like button, subscribe and uh, leave me a comment and I promise I'll respond as soon as I can. Thanks for following, thanks for watching. I actually just thought of one thing and as this is part of my photography journey, why not take a photo of myself vlogging? So um, I'm going to do that. I'm not sure, I'm actually going to set this to portrait. Um, because the uh, I'm not very far away from the camera. I don't know if I can, you can see this. Let's see if the camera will zoom. No, it won't. No. Anyway, it's set to portrait. There you go. So, we'll land on the camera. And this can be my selfie for this row. So here you go. Take a picture. This is me blogging about my camera. So there you go.